Let's move on to our third main topic today. And our third main topic today gets submitted to us by Eric Walters, who writes, Hey, John, I'm loving The Mandalorian so far, and in my mind, the series gets better and better. The fourth episode, Sanctuary, was completely fantastic and reinforced the show's true old Western style influence. But I'm hearing some people complain that it was just filler. How did you see the episode? All right. Thanks a lot for the question, man. And yes, the newest episode, I was in Vegas and uh, we didn't have Disney Plus in the room. (gasps) So all of us, about four of us uh, who were there gathered around a coffee table and my iPad and just launched up the Mandalorian and we watched Sanctuary that way. And I will tell you this, while I did not quite like episode four Sanctuary quite as much as episode three. I I think it's my second favorite episode. I loved it. And I loved it on several levels. And in response to this notion that it was a filler episode, I want to present a couple of arguments here that you may agree with or disagree with, but I want to present a couple of arguments here of why I feel that this episode was not just wonderful, but pivotal and important. And so much stuff happens and is is accomplished in this episode alone. Let me go over some of the things about reason why I think this episode of The Mandalorian, episode four, Sanctuary, was so important. Number one, as you mentioned in, in the message yourself, it entrenches the Western motif of the show. That has been important for Jon Favreau to never let up on this point. It's not just an element of it is kind of in Western or one episode is kind of... Jon Favreau really wants to drive home This is the Wild West in space. This is the outer frontier of the galaxy. And this, all within the container of a Star Wars film. And I think when he picks up and does episodes like this, and by the way, this episode directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. She did a wonderful job. She did a really nice job on this, so well done to her. But anyway, I think this episode does does even more to reinforce that fact that this is truly a Western we're watching. Uh, Almost more, not quite as much more, but almost more than than the fact that it's a sci-fi epic. And I thought that was great. Number two, we see more development in the character of Mando than we've seen in any of the episodes. We've actually seen, look, it's important for a story that not only as the story progresses, we need to see a change happening in the lead character. That's that's a hallmark of all great films. We see change happening within the character themselves. And I would contend that we've seen more evolution and more change in Mando as a character in this episode. We, we see him changing without ever seeing his face, by the way. But he did have his helmet off this episode. Seeing they're eating, by the way, in a trans- totally open window where everybody could have just looked in the window and seen him, but whatever. So, but we've He was in the shadows, John. He was in the shadow. Lots of shadow. Very Batman-ish of him. But... We see more of his development and evolution here than, than in any of the other episodes. And by the way, we had a number of weeks of time lapse as well in this episode. And I thought that was incredibly key and very important moving forward. Number three, the evolution of the Mando and Baby Yoda relationship. Listen, in everything else, in all the episodes we've had up till now, and there's only been three, but it's been, we can tell that Mando has... A connection, some like he has an emotional connection to some in some way, shape, or form. To, like he feels empathy for this creature, whether it's because of it's his own origins as a foundling himself and as an orphan himself, or whatever. But there's something there, and this is connection. So he's not just going to leave it to die with the former Imperials. He's not just going to let some bounty hunters kill it. He feels kind of a need to take care of it. This episode, though, I contend, takes that relationship and bounds it forward. Because now, not only does he have some emotional tether to the character, he's emotionally invested in Baby Yoda. He cares about Baby Yoda. Whereas in the first couple episodes, he almost feels like some way an honor-bound kind of idea of a responsibility to this little creature. And I'm sure we'll find out more on that why in future episodes. But this one went beyond that. He now legitimately has affection for this kid. He now wants what's best for this kid. And even to the point of being willing to leave the kid behind if he thinks that's what's best for the kid. Not best for him, best for the kid. And I think that's incredibly important in storytelling. Rob, you always say character, character, character. And they were focused on their development on the characters here. And I thought that was key. Anyway, number four. It gives a new environment that we've never really seen in Star Wars before. John, we've seen forests before. I'm not talking about the forest. This was the first time, really, it almost felt a little bit like a Firefly episode in some way. The first time that we actually get a little local village of of human people 
daily lives in and out and stuff like that. And we've never had that in any really sort of incarnation of Star Wars before, at least not in a live action setting. So I thought that was breaking new ground as well. Number five, it introduces us to a new character without the normal standard coincidence that that character was also a part of the main uh, overall story. What normally happens in stories like this is the Mandalorian will come across somebody else who's trying to get away from the uh, from the uh, Bounty Hunters Guild or somebody else who's got it in for Werner Herzog's former Imperial. No, this was encountering a new character on a totally separate thing. And I thought that was valuable. And I, I thought that was really good the way they handled that. So to me, on top of all that, just the great quality of it. And it was clearly three amigos in space which is great, or you can call it the Magnificent Seven in space, or you can call call it the Seven Samurai in space, but whatever, had that classic story element into there with Star Wars. For so many reasons, I thought it was great, but more than that, Rob, for so many reasons, I thought it was actually pivotal and accomplished some very important things. So that was my take on uh, this episode of The Mandalorian. You had a chance to check out this episode of The Mandalorian Sanctuary. How did you see it? Do you see it as something propelling it forward? Did you see it maybe just as filler? Some other people have watched it and experienced. How did you see it? Well, I feel the same way about this episode as you do. I, it's not filler at all. You're, you know, you're. What I also loved to add to what you said, I liked how we learned more about the Star Wars universe since mm. the Empire <laughs> fell at the end of Jedi. There's equipment lying around. You know, some group of some jerkhead bandit dudes who want to victimize people. Well, somebody was able to get the keys to an ATST, you know, and it, it, it was not clearly well maintained. It was very dirty and it had been around for a while and they'd been using it. I love how Bryce Dallas Howard shot it like it was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yes. Yeah, you know, I mean, yes. it was it was like the whole thing was like a creature. Obviously, her time spent on the Jurassic World s uh, sets were, were well spent. I love the idea that well, when was the last time you took the armor off? The Mandalorian's like, well, yesterday. It's not like he leaves it on. Like, I'm wondering does he wash his clothes? Yes, he does. He probably polishes his armor. He takes it off. You know, it's just that he can't allow other people to see him. Of course, when he eats, especially soup, he's got to take his helmet off. No, I thought what, you know, what I was, I made the, I, 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 I misjudged this show. And now I figured out what Favreau is doing. He is absolutely telling a classic Western story. And each episode, he's going through these well-worn Western tropes putting it in the Star Wars universe, which is what Star Wars did originally. Yes. It, it took samurai movies and movies like The Hidden Fortress and Seven Samurai and sort of mixed them up. Uh, and that's what he's doing. He's just going back and because kids today, people today, they're not well versed in the Westerns. So what we're doing is we're getting we're getting sort of a primer to the entire Western genre, genre through the eyes of Star Wars. And I'm really loving this. And, and I think... If I were to venture a guess, we're going to lead up to some, either it's going to be a wild bunch ending or it's going to be some big standoff like good, the bad and the ugly. I mean, we've seen fights, but something big, it's leading up to something big. And I love Gina Carano, Cara Dune. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've always liked Gina Carano. I mean, a lot of people talk about her acting, but I've always liked her as a presence. I thought she was fantastic in this episode. Mm. I love the way she looked. I have a mad crush on her. God, she's beautiful. Ironically, you do, know what her, you do know what her name in American Gladiators was. Uh, I don't. Crush. You just use the word yourself. Uh, well, there you go. I so her, I've I got a crush on crush. crush. Uh, she's, I really liked her. I liked the whole relationship they had. That meet cute when they were fighting oh, yeah. or the guns pointed at each other. I'm like, you know, I wanted some, when I, this show first started, I'm like, Ooh, I hope it's going to be this. I don't know what I expected, but now that I know what it is and rather than judging it, I can sit down and sit back and go, I really like this. I like what's happening. I understand. Could it, could the show be more in depth? Could it, could it be much? Sure. But that's not what this is. What, and what this is, I'm all about authorship. Favreau has written every episode so far. Uh, he's obviously overseen the direction. Uh, we've seen Deborah Chow who knocked out of the park. Bryce yeah. Dallas Howard knocked out of the park. And we're, we're getting, I think this show is exactly what they wanted it to be. And now that I know that it's it's not like I'm watching something that I, I don't think is working. I think John Favreau knew exactly what he was doing. And I think this show is giving us exactly what he intended. And now that I'm settled in and understand that, I'm loving the show. So the question here is, guys, 
What did you think of episode four of Mandalorian Sanctuary? Did you like there are some people out there who saw and they kind of like they felt disappointed. They wanted it. They felt it was filler. I thought it was fantastic. Rob obviously liked it. What did you guys think of it? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys.